Hello and welcome to the Thursday, January 26, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, I mentioned a couple of podcasts ago about uh, Microsoft's OneNote being abused in order to deliver uh, scripts uh, to uh, victims. Well, uh, Xavier now wrote up uh, one example to walk you through the process of actually analyzing these malicious documents. The typical extension here is dot one and DDA luckily wrote a tool to help you analyze it. So that's what Xavier uses here in order to walk you through how to extract the script in this particular case and introduce the mechanics of how uh, these malicious documents uh, work. It all starts uh, with, well, a OneNote document, of course, that has a big click to view a document button. And uh, that's really sort of the entire or the big trick here. By clicking uh, the button, uh, the user will inadvertently open a document that will then launch the script. If you wonder why that button is kind of big and ugly, uh, well, uh, part of it may be to make it easier to hit the button, but also the actual malicious script is then hidden behind the button. The button is just a PNG and, uh, well, uh, serves not just to trigger execution, but also uh, to hide the actual malicious uh, content. If you run into any documents like that, uh, well, uh, please forward them. Always interested in uh, newish uh, malware. Blocking the dot one uh, extension or dot o n e, so it's spelled out a uh, one extension is a commonly recommended countermeasure here. Uh, just uh, be careful uh, that users uh, don't actually email OneNote documents to each other. Typically, I see them uh, being shared via cloud services, not so much uh, as email attachments, but uh, certainly possible that some people are sending them around as email. Now, one thing attackers uh, like to install on compromised systems is software that allows them to remote control the system. The problem here, of course, is that the software is then often identified as a malware, and uh, that, of course, triggers an incident uh, report and gets the attacker kicked out of the network. What happens, on the other hand, is also that attackers are using legitimate software like any desk or uh, software like that that's often legitimately used in order to uh, monitor and manage remote uh, systems and then they abuse it as a backdoor or as a command and control channel. The NSA now came up with some guidance on how to secure this type of software. So you still may use it, of course, uh, for your own legitimate purposes, but you also need to make sure it can't be abused. And the reason why they sort of came up with that guidance is that the federal government has seen in the fall sort of uh, increase in attacks that took advantage of software like this. I've seen it uh, for quite a while uh, that attackers sort of uh, have taken advantage of software like this. So uh, nothing really new, but certainly important to consider how you secure uh, this software and limit who and how it can be used. And Robert Lemus from Dark Reading put together a nice summary of uh, various Kerberos attacks that uh, may affect uh, Microsoft's Azure Active Directory. These cloud services use the same Kerberos protocol as you're used to from your on-premise equivalent. And of course, it is vulnerable to similar uh, issues as the on-premise active uh, directory implementation. So uh, nice write-up with links uh, to various sources for more technical uh, details. And Microsoft continues its quest to limit active content being downloaded from the internet after macros. The next goal here is XLL files. These are add-ins for Excel and prevent execution of these add-ins that are downloaded from the internet. This will uh, become effective in March. And we got a couple of miscellaneous uh, patches. Uh, VMware uh, patched a critical vulnerability in its vRealize uh, tool. Uh, Lexmark uh, did 
release updated firmware for its uh, printers that allowed uh, remote code execution. And uh, then we also got a new version of uh, Google Chrome with uh, updates. Well, that's it for today. Thanks and for listening. And thanks for all of those who told me that uh, this podcast actually works quite well in Alexa. Uh, so, uh, yes, you can have yourself uh, woken up in the morning uh, with it. Uh, thanks to everybody who is continuing to help promote uh, the podcast and for all the input that uh, I'm receiving regarding it. Also, of course, as usual, thanks for all of the reviews. Well, that's it for today. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.